Hi everybody, Dr. Aulis here. In this short video, I'm gonna talk with you about other organs in the body that aren't strictly endocrine organs, but still have some endocrine functions. I wanna start with reminding you of several of the organs that we already talked about in the context of the endocrine system. So we talked about the hypothalamus. Remember that the hypothalamus primarily regulates the pituitary gland when we're talking about the front half, the adenohypophysis, but it also creates the hormones that are spit out by the back half, the neurohypophysis. Speaking of the pituitary gland with its two, two parts, the pituitary gland spits out many of the hormones that are going to regulate all of the other endocrine organs in the body. So remember that the pituitary gland spits out a lot of kinds of hormones called tropins that regulate the activity of, of other body organs. We talked a little bit about the thyroid gland. Remember that the thyroid gland is very important in the HPT axis, which is the one that regulates your body's metabolism, but it also plays an important role in regulating the calcium level in your body. It does that in conjunction with the parathyroid gland that we talked about having the opposite function in regulating calcium levels in the blood. We also talked a lot about the adrenal glands. Remember that the adrenal glands are part of the HPA axis and they have many different, different functions. Remember that the outside, the cortex of the adrenal gland makes those things called mineralocorticoids the middle layer makes those things called glucocorticoids, and the innermost layer makes those things called gonadocorticoids. All of those hormones, along with epinephrine and norepinephrine, all come from this endocrine gland, the adrenal gland. And the last gland that we talked about in our, our recent videos is the pancreas. Remember that the pancreas makes four different, different hormones but those hormones either regulate blood glucose levels or they regulate each other. So those are the endocrine organs we've hit on. There's one other that we haven't talked a lot about that I wanna make sure to point out for you, and that's the pineal gland. If you remember from AMP1, the pineal gland is what makes the thing called melatonin. Melatonin is your sleepy time hormone. As it gets closer to nighttime, your body makes more melatonin, when it's time to wake up, melatonin levels should be going down. So melatonin, like all of the other hormones that we've talked about in this, this chapter, secreted into the bloodstream, regulating the body, setting these things called circadian rhythms. All of these organs here highlighted in purple are what we might call primary endocrine organs. The others that we see listed over here in, in my, my grayish box, whatever color you wanna call it. These are the ones that their primary function isn't spitting out hormones, but they do spit out a significant number, which is why they make my list. So let's talk about several of these different non-endocrine organs that play a role in the endocrine system. The first one I wanna mention is the heart. When we talk about the heart, the hormone to be familiar with is something called atrial natriuretic peptide. Atrial natriuretic peptide is involved in water balance and as it says here, blood volume. When we break down our name, it helps us to understand. Atrial means the atrium, as in the two upper chambers of the heart. This natri part up here, that's where the salt comes in. So we're figuring out the salt level in the blood based on how stretched out the atria are the top chambers of the heart. By spitting out this hormone, the heart helps to regulate blood, blood volume. The next location that's not primarily endocrine but does secrete a lot of hormones is the digestive tract. Notice that we have several different hormones that are, are released by the digestive tract. We will come back to some of these when we get to the digestive system. But as we're looking at them, I'll mention this gastrin hormone that's going to regulate activities in the stomach. Or when we're looking at things like secretin, that's gonna regulate secretions in the digestive tract. Ghrelin is what we might call the hunger hormone. So several different hormones related to the functioning of the digestive tract, that's what we see it making. And the last one I wanna mention 
that we did talk a little bit about are the kidneys. We talked about the kidneys uh, as being responsible for bringing in or out blood, depending on the levels of things like antidiuretic hormone. But the kidneys themselves actually have an endocrine role when it comes to uh, the process of, of creating blood. So erythropoietin, uh, summarized down to EPO, this is the hormone that's in control of the process of erythropoiesis, which is making new red blood cells. So we'll look a little bit more at erythropoietin in our next chapter, but keep in mind that this is a hormone, part of the endocrine system, and it's made by the kidneys to regulate the process of red blood cell formation. So as you're studying the endocrine system, take time to learn not only the functions of my true endocrine organs, but also those ones with the secondary endocrine functions like we see listed here.